Bharati is coming up now. <laughs> yes, Bharati, you're, uh, you're going to be live in the stage. Say hello. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, probably. Yeah. You may be seeing like uh, it's a quite a lengthy day. Uh, it will come from the part where I'm coming from. So you you guys can call me as Bharti, right? That's easy to pronounce. Not to say too much of my name. Bharti. <laughs> and uh, going back before, yeah, before even going back, I I rather probably three one you guys. How did I start Arana, right? So I it's not a fix about what I'm doing. I love to tell you where exactly I started uh, landing in Oranans. Uh, I run a data consortium, and uh, this is uh, dealing with you know, like a easy couple of uh, uh, Baltic uh, data consultancies come together, and we work uh, for a lot of uh, high state retail clients and uh, big uh, banks. In fact, uh, yeah, I can't name it because I can't find any yet. So, so we collaboratively work, like we have a data engineering. Uh, companies, consultancies, we have a data science consultancy service and analytics consultancy, right? One of the projects, what we started as a Portugal based oil uh, engineering. So, we, I mean, part of uh, the work is how do we come up with a perspective on the uh, guessing when the mission is going to fail, when is the, what's the window of failure, and uh, what exactly, you know, will be that uh, remaining full of time. So those kind of are all uh, the engineering tasks. Up until that point, my uh, interests were on uh, CNNs because, like, uh, we were doing a bit of for one of the high uh, clients, uh, doing an, uh, how exactly we understand the intent of a customer using the videos, images, all those kind of things. So, my interest on the CNN is on the CNN side. You know, part of a RNN fan. So, part of this project we started this. The reason I wanted to tell you is so, when we were doing this POC uh, in uh, in collaboration with the various other data science consultancies, what exactly I have learned on the course is what I am trying to present it here, right? So this is here for testing. This probably might be much more advanced than this, what I am telling here, probably I am here for testing, so you guys can probably feed me back, then I can probably do it, whatever I am doing it, and then test it, and then the next uh, second I can present it, right? Right, so basis, and I mean, based on this piece, the reason, key reason why I'm thinking an RNN got, you know, placed into a, uh, what do you call it, an existence, it, it's it's like, a, I, I don't want to go into that. For instance, it's a standard neural network, which is typically used for, you know, sequence of text, or sequence of uh, data, time series data, or whatever it is, right? When you want to understand what exactly, oh, this guy is talking about, I want to sense it. I want to apply a context, I want to apply a, a meaning to what exactly he's talking about and then respond to it. That is exactly when you know, we use this kind of a neural network, right? Because it is slightly different from a pattern classification or pattern recognition type stuff, primarily because it has to really look at, look back and understand what exactly has happened 10 minutes ago and then what probably 10 minutes ago or 10 hours ago, whatever it is, right? What exactly has happened in the past then realize, oh, that's what the context, and then respond is what exactly that we apply to, right? 
So we have we have the standard uh, neural networks, which says you you all know right, right uh, how the neural networks work. You have input, you have you train the models in a blindfold that they it has an output, right? Take a classic example of to train a model with a thousand dogs, thousand elephants, thousand cats, right? And then you expose the model with a, let's say cat. Just because of the model is exposed or the model is trained, the last time it is with the elephant doesn't mean that it will not have an influence of elephant because the model is uh, agnostic of what exactly it's been trained, right? That is exactly the way you know it works. Order is immaterial, right? In a typical standard neural network. But it doesn't work in all the spaces, right? What exactly the prescriptive analytics problems we I spoke about it are in a very, very general uh, example. How do I how do I understand what exactly I'm talking about, right? Probably uh, the guy sitting there trying to understand what exactly I'm talking about in a machine language way, it doesn't really work, right? Because it's a pure classification problem space. What I'm talking about is understanding the semantic stuff, right? So when I was looking at it, I mean, not me, in the whole uh, machine language scientists, when they were looking at it, how exactly they have learned it, what exactly the motivation behind it, right? Because this is not a problem which is not, which is a bit of unsolved, right? Which is not an unsolved thing. Our human mind, our human sensory things, I'm hearing it, and then I'm understanding what exactly somebody is talking about it. So the human mind has solved it, right? How exactly human mind has solved this problem? This has solved in a way, like, this is the way I'm not a human mind expert by the way, anyway. In a very, very, very high abstract way, this is the way our mind works, right? Our conscious stuff works. It forms of three, three things, three components. One is memory, I mean, it always has a very, very complex part. I, I, I had in the past, I had an interest about studying about memory. So that's when I just thought, like, I wanted to spell up all how exactly practice memory works, how exactly retention memory works, space memory works, because often daily basis I teach my son, you know, what the important of practice and the give us space to you know, what they learn and then uh, we call that attention memory all the same thing. Anyway, not going deep into that piece, the whole conscious or brain consciousness works based on the memory, how exactly it is stored, and the environment and the decision model. If I put, a, I haven't drawn this, but if I have put a mirror image, a neural network, a standard neural network, I can start pairing, right? Very simple. Environment, nothing but your neural networks, right? And decision making process, you can probably say any uh, reinforcement learning, like a GPU device, and then you know, how exactly function network based on the processing, uh, based on the behavior. So which you can do this. Okay, what is this whole memory talks about? Just now the neural network that we spoke so far is just learning cats, recognition cats, right? Elephants, recognition elephants. What exactly, you know, what happened uh, 10 minutes before, what uh, what happened uh, 10 steps, 100 steps before, it doesn't have a capability to understand what exactly it is, right? So that is exactly the motivation behind this whole ordinary stuff. So if, if I go back to the prior slide, if I understand RNN, put it in a layman terms, environment is nothing but a neural network. Understand what exactly the state is at, how control the state is at. Obviously, it will be driven by the decision making process, which is nothing but you, uh, you can probably carry to your uh, reinforcement learning or whatever it is. And how exactly the whole memory space works is what the whole uh, you know, RNN talks about. So that's that's a pairing In a slightly, you know, if you forget this piece, take this piece alone. What exactly it does is, I mean, forget the loop for a moment. The RNN, all it does is, if you have an input, you have an activation, and then you have an output. Very simple. Thing, yeah? Standard feed for the networks, or any standard activation. But in a typical RNN, what exactly it does is, it feedbacks to itself. That means it doesn't make any sense, but in a time sense it makes sense, right? The state feedback to the next time step of its prior step, right? That is exactly given here, right? You have a, a time steps, 
time step. At time t, time 1, time 2, time 3. It is not so long. In a typical feed forward network, you have an input, you have a uh, weight, or you have a bit of a bias, and then you have an output, right? There is an additional input coming in, which is nothing but the prior state. That's all, right? In a, if I put my Lehman terms lens, the way I'm seeing the RN is the standard neural networks, and then you put a prior input. That's it. That is the way I'm looking at it, right? This, I'll, I'll tell you the power of the whole RN. Oh, okay, is this this simple? Then if this is the case, it looks like uh, it reminds me uh, then Marco models. Yeah. It's the same. I, I'm, I'm going to answer it on that. So, uh, pop your uh, control your post for a minute. So, that is exactly, so why would I do it? Then the fundamental question, right? The obvious question, right? Why the hell I'm complex, making this so complex? Keep, keep uh, creating a nest of step, 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 right? Why I'm doing it? Because I need to look back, I need to have a traceability of what exactly happened in the past, right? This is nothing new, right? In a typical feed forward network, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody knows about uh, how we land the whole models using the uh, error rate, sending it back, back propagation, all those things, right? So if I think about that one, I still have a, if I, if I, if I trace the way I'm, uh, you know, adjusting my model by error rate feeding back to the network, I still have a trace. Anybody, anybody have a, anybody thinking I'm black, that comes, because the moment when I, when I was reading this, I thought, oh, okay, that is what exactly I'm, we are doing in a feed forward. All we are doing in a weight adjustment. You have a step by step, right? You have a step, if I capture my error rates, and the step by step uh, error rate adjustments, all I have is a trace. That is exactly what they are doing. Anybody, anybody have a clue? Why you shouldn't do that way? By the way, RNN is not the only way of solving establishing traits history, right? People do implicitly code their uh, error rates or implicitly code their uh, fast steps. There are methods, there are low-tech methods, people do that. Or there are methods like uh, capturing your error rate, uh, proportional of error rate, all those kind of things, right? So, what's the difference? What's the exact difference? Anybody in the go? Either I didn't tell the question very clearly or probably boring. Anybody wants to say how it goes? I mean, how, how is that different? My point is, okay, the whole RNN is for the purpose of establishing a trace, which is okay. Establishing a trace of the past, fine. That exactly we can do it using, you know, probably you have, you know, you, you, you establish or you capture your error rate, right, on the course of your career and so how is that different? So why why are we looking for something new name or an By the way, I didn't want to be so strict because I have given the answer anyway. Here. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So yes, obviously yeah, we could do it, but the problem is with the typical feed forward and the back propagations to the error rate, you stop your model as soon as you think they oh this is the optimal learning, right? You don't want your model to overfit. So you stop it, and beyond that point, the model is static. You can call it as frozen memory, or you can call it as a static memory, whatever. It is static. By that time, it is static. And the, the moment it starts learning, the model is static. Right? You could solve it. Oh, can I continuously learn it? The problem is, the more input, you, the more time you do that, your model is prone to work. Right? So it's a, it's a trade-off game. Right? It's a trade-off game where exactly you want to stop it or you want to expose the entire history of data, right? So it's a trade-off game. The result of that trade-off is what are in my view. Yeah. That's the way I'm, I articulate or that's the way I'm seeing it. Yeah. So you don't want to work with the model. At the same time, you know, like how exactly you know, you find the whole team, how exactly you establish the whole trace of the data. That is exactly that. That's the way I'm seeing it. In conflict and controversy. Okay. 
we move on to the next one. I mean, I just want to play a layman game, uh, game here, but I, since uh, I'll, I'll skip that part and go here. I'll tax a bit of a back propagation here because I need to, I need to, in the next step, I have a, something that's uh, upon this point. Anybody, I'm pretty sure, let everybody proficient with back, back propagation. Anybody not? Only for them, I will. I think everybody is proficient with the back propagation of the elevation or anything like that. To be honest, uh, text tunnel, in fact, I have to say this, I started my interest in text tunnel text. Thank you. But the commercial opportunities came from uh, CNN side and then those things. Uh, we haven't the tool to be honest with you, and it's But I have, in, in fact, I was doing this thing. I have uh, gone through yesterday, I met uh, Mr. Andrew's uh, speech about the DAM, uh, team for uh, our networking, which he has done a bit of uh, outreach about the whole of the lab and the news, and then try to do an. Uh, so that's a piece of uh, uh, work that I'm still handling. From So going further on this one, the yeah, typical line in forest and just having a mathematical uh, It is a simple app, uh, the couple slides back here, whatever we are seeing. It's if you forget about it, uh, put a bias in it, but uh, then it is a standard uh, uh, feed for the uh, neural networks. But what exactly the difference here is the transition, right? The one we just now yeah. How to represent the input coming from here, the yeah, step ago, right? From this point, looking at this point forward, how exactly I represent what is the weight I've given to this piece is what exactly this view is all about. Yeah? So the weight is given to the input that is coming from uh, T minus one, given the T. What exactly my uh, transitional state of weight, and the, this is the standard weight, and this is the function of, you know, like you were current input, and you were weight, Plus, and some of you know, whatever coming from that type. This is what exactly the whole So, this is nothing but if, if I take as a standalone picture, a standalone representation, this is exactly what the uh, RNN is all about. Right? In, a, in a not unfolded way, this is exactly what right? And this is, which is nothing but a simple. Which is nothing but a similar to what exactly I did in Marco Polis. Yeah. But what is differentiating RNN from Hitchaman uh, is the kind of a nested model. Yeah. Now Hitchaman, what exactly you can do is you can represent the whole whole of this piece, but it can't represent the whole of you know like the probably a hundred step ago, right? You can't establish a trace of this, 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 this further go, right? That is the nested model, the power of RNN. You have, at this point in time, it's a standard neural network. At this point in time, you can start talking about a hexamon. But at this point in time, you have an, another nested case. It is a nested whole, nested equations of, you know, how exactly the, what, what is that uh, values that is being given in the tensors, right? Yeah, sorry. But, yeah, I was just going to say that one of the key advantages of the so you 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 mean instant instantaneously assign the rates of each network? No, no, just to know like the human perspective, like that trying to figure out like Thank you. 
with a with a do a back end switch. Uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's a very interesting good uh, point as well. Uh, one of the way, you know, like uh, what we were looking at is how exactly, you know, like if you could trace the whole of the KL deviation. Right? Uh, that is one of the way to, you know, probably visualize what exactly, you know, happened at the, you know, kind of a deviation. Because end of the day, the whole piece is how exactly, you know, your uh, that you were probably being visited on about what exactly was forward and what exactly was backward stars and how how much align it has both pictures aligned together. Right? So the one of the way to look at it is you know uh, during the report training process, how much of a deviation it is and then from where it is coming down, down, down. So that that says in a way proportionally in a way how much weight I'm coming down, right? The kind of a way deviation that you could uh, visualize. That is one of the ways you know, these are thinking, you know, that could be solved that. And uh, yeah, uh, probably I can have a further look into it for exactly you know, this kind of This is the you know, analysis of the for exactly this is the you know, yeah. so I'll, I'll take it up and probably it. Thank you. Thank you. And if you have, uh, by the way, other than that method, if you think, you know, there are efficient methods that you think you should be able to understand exactly in a common sense setting, that is exactly what you can do understand. Model and So, how exactly the variance of the whole pitch, the rate? Yeah, probably. Okay, so this is So far, I mean, we have established enough about the control of model and and what exactly this can do on the time of the time. I don't know to go to the default definition. But we all know what exactly are means in terms of how it is uh, functioning. Now, thinking about the whole of uh, these, these are the uh, problems that we encounter. These are the standard things that people do complain about. It. So I try to do a union on it. So if, especially now we even got stuck in the first uh, first level itself, so the whole of agreement managing. Typically, there are two main problems. Uh, you know surrounding in this RM space. One is a gradient vanishing. The second one is a, it's too much of an expensive. The more nodes because because of the expressive power about RM, it's too much too much of expensive to find them. It takes ages to train them at times. We don't know. We have even tried a, we have tried a changing uh, average, we have tried a dropouts, we have tried all possible stuff, but uh, you know I know it, it's a hardcore problem I mean, don't even seem to be going for exactly the problem. So we are doing a spray and spray type of work. So uh, we exactly don't know what exactly the problem. But the general thing that we are getting is RMN because of its, its expressive power and the more nodes it's flowing, it is so 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 much expensive to find a model. Then we were looking at it, is there a way to you know address this whole of expensive question? Or is that a way to, I mean, gradient vanishing, you guys all know, you know that by now you know, there are enough problems, there are enough uh, methods to address it. So, gradient uh, vanishing is primarily the way I'm seeing the whole uh, gradient vanishing is partly because of the way it is being architecture. Number one, because you are taking the error rate and then back propagating it, and then uh, because it's being multiplied, it's a standard uh, as a numerical algebra numerical uh, problems because it's multiplication you know like if it is high you explode if it is low you know it's on time two time even for the network to figure out how that it is right so that is a gradient vanishing problems if it is high you could you could uh, figure it out you can take you can truncate it and then you can figure it out if it is too tiny you can't do it right that is exactly the uh, problem that gradient vanishing problem and that, that is partly because of uh, how far you go back, you get lost, number one. Number two, because of the multiplication uh, process uh, involved. Number three, because of the activation functions, and then you use a sigmoid, you know, it's fast, 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 right? And it's fast to a level you can't even detect them, right? At that level, you, you can't even detect them. To so that, that is exactly one of the sigmoid, uh, the problem of the sigmoid function as well. And if you use uh, a rectified, uh, rectified uh, 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 at least you know you avoid this whole of uh, uh, 
uh, exploiting numbers problem space, right? So exploit numbers is not a big deal because you can at least do a computation. So at least you can do you know what exactly and get the whole number, limit the whole uh, exploding problem to a level where it you know, feels comfortable. But the whole of a vanishing problem is actually the problem because it is, you don't know like, when you deploy the vanishing problem. The way there are low-tech ways, there are high-tech ways. The high-tech ways you can probably talk about a lot of LSTMs and VRUs and then uh, other methods like uh, deep orbit networking. But there are low-tech ways, you know, you can probably do a truncated uh, back propagation through time type thing. By the way, back propagation through time is nothing but, uh, you know, it is not a great science. It is nothing but a, a standard back propagation. So in a typical feed forward, you know, you do a back propagation. But because, you know, it is associated, RNN is associated with the time, you do a back propagation through time. That's it. That's the only thing. But it is, a, it is the way you can visualize is the nested uh, functions of, you know, uh, connected with the time. You go back in time at time. I mean, when you do a back propagation, you go back to the time that is exactly what it is all about. It is, that is, it is not a great variant of what the standard back propagation that does in a feed forward network, right? What, one other thing is that you can control this whole piece via parameters. Like you can probably set the whole, you know, how many time steps that I want to go back in time. Probably uh, hundred, thousands, whatever it is. But the problem, I, I, I'm not a fan of uh, the whole of aggregated back propagation through time. Primarily, it does solve the problem to a certain extent, but it is not the complete piece. I mean, it is thinking the problem. It is it is saying, okay, you can probably go back a couple of paragraphs in the backups. Right? That's exactly probably a couple of details, maybe in the text, maybe in the set. A couple of paragraphs, you can go back. Beyond that, I don't know what's happening. Right? I get lost. My gradient uh, balancing start up here. So, for that point, for that from that perspective, I'm not really great fan of the whole of that data back propagation because it is not solving the problem, it is just avoiding for a couple of steps backwards, right? That is where the whole of uh, beauty of the whole LSTM comes. Again, I want to put my uh, layman lens. The whole of uh, the LSTM, the way I'm seeing it is you have a whole of uh, RNNs and then you put a couple of uh, gates, right? We, see, in a typical uh, feed forward network, you have a three steps, right? Your inputs, your activities, and your outputs. And then, each step, you put some gates. And let them, let the individual gates, individual steps, learn on its own. That is exactly the whole LSTM all about, right? Probably, guys, I'm, I'm still happy to be challenged. I mean, if you guys have a better uh, definition, or a better way of defining it, please, I'm happy to be challenged. The way I'm learning it, the way I'm seeing it is, in our human mind, that is the beauty of our human mind, right? So I have, a, on one side of it, I have a, a father mood, one side I have a data science staff, one side I have a, a citizen thing, all stuff happening at the same time, right? The learning rate in those different settings, going on a different things, at a different speed, but my mind is able to capture it. That is exactly the whole LSTM is trying to achieve. You have a different time scale of different functions, but all happens at once. That is the whole purpose of you having a gates at the input level, output level, activation function level, right? Because of this, because you have you are controlling how exactly your input is handled, how exactly your activation function is handled, how exactly your whole output is handled, you should be able to you should be able to control. So I need to let this guy in, right? You are the kind of error coming in, the kind of error going out, the kind of uh, input coming in, output going out, all those things. You control. The whole control function itself is a learning in itself, right? So basically you have a, a, a foundational layer, which is nothing but a RNN. You train them, you let them to train on the standard uh, training learning process via back propagation. And you also let the whole gating mechanisms which is nothing but your control mechanisms, also get planned on its own, right? On, on the similar patterns. So input learn itself, input gate learn itself, and the output learn itself, output gate also learn itself. So basically you have a two layers, one is your foundational layer of RNN, like feed forward network, and you have another layer of 
dating mechanics and combine work together and figure out how, what, what exactly is looking for. Expensive processing, even for the standard uh, RNNs, and here we are talking about you have a sorry, you have, yeah. you have a layer on top of it you put on another layer and that layer also start learning it. Think about it. Are we not compounding the problems? Are we not compounding the whole expensive processing problems? Right? Yeah, I, I agree. You know, it does. It is not uh, resulting managing problems. It is uh, keeping the memories. It is keeping the memories well enough. It's all okay, fantastic. At what cost? Yeah. Is that I mean, at times you know, like there are scenarios people don't bother about the cost. Every possible city uh, capacity is available. The possible capacity in the world is available. But in a, from a commercial settings, at what cost? That's a question always comes up, right? So there are there are variants. Oh, you start okay. If if I can I control just my inputs. Can I cut off just my activations? Can I remove the gating from my whole LSTMs? That is exactly the area, right? Just to improve performance, improve the whole, I mean, cut down on the whole of costing that is associated with the whole of uh, LSTM stacks. Putting too many gates, sometimes too many securities, right? So that is exactly the whole of the area. So, uh, I mean, uh, this is a uh, I think this is coming from Karpati's uh, blog, the whole of uh, the diagram I haven't written myself, and very bad in drawing. Uh, if you really look at it, the whole of uh, uh, block points is nothing but gates, whatever we spoke about it, right? If you remove the block points, you could visualize this is nothing but a standard uh, RNA, right? You put the gates on it, control the whole learning process, both at the input and the activation and the output level, that is exactly the whole of RNA. There's nothing but a, your external memory that in your computer that you control how to write it, how to save it, how to read it, all those kind of things. So basically giving the whole of RNN uh, mechanism to access uh, memory structure. That is that, right? That's exactly this all about. And if you, if you remove the whole of, uh, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm just to be honest, uh, GR is something very new to me. I the reason I we went to GRE is for this purpose, right? Because it's too much, it's taking too much time that we didn't know whether it is a problem with our modeling or it's a problem with our uh, uh, way we have done it, or is it a problem with you know, the uh, kind of a uh, problem space. So we thought, you know, like the probably will this uh, result any better uh, and get to see that result. So are you telling me to yeah, it's mixed back, like um, we've been inspired by the public, we have uh, given it a start from uh, some of our existing code, and then on top of it, you know, like uh, the problem is that we really designed it. Uh, yeah, we use uh, existing parts like that. We use uh, a couple of new components for a couple of years. We didn't make any success of this again. Oh. And uh, we didn't it, and then uh, we thought probably uh, it's too much, too much stuff. Uh, and then that's when you know, we started exploring all these uh, you know, possible areas and stuff like that. Uh, um, we, to be honest, uh, the vanishing stuff, you know, we just wanted to be avoiding it. So for a start, we started with some electives. We don't know whether we are going to be doing it for a, uh, for a start. But then uh, it, was, it is too much expensive if we start exploring all this. And the DAN seems to be quite. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is a whole theory, right? The DAN is, seems to be quite uh, convincing because he, instead of uh, taking at an individual uh, bar level, it is taking an average and then uh, then it applies the whole of uh, softmax uh, the uh, uh, representations. We are thinking, you know, probably this could solve our problems, but before that, you know, we are just now taking a bit of space, trying to really understand what exactly is the problem with our model. Is it, is it, is it just that another you know, complexity is driving the whole uh, uh, expensive or it is a whole of fine. You know, we are we are on the right path and we need to apply all these kind of you know, uh, by the way if um, uh, yeah if you uh, wondering you know uh, uh, again as GRU as well as uh, 
the body in the and then we are exploring at the moment so whatever i have seen in the way and it's what i'm just telling that because the way i'm seeing it is it should in theory it should uh, bring down the whole of the processing because if you have here you know more of layered representations because you have a uh, you know this piece with the fast input this piece and then you apply the whole of the activation here and then from this result this result activation here this result this result activation here but here all you do is and i'm taking in an average of all the batch representations in the space and then taking an array from there you do one error representation right so the result seems to be quite uh, convincing the result seems to be quite uh, drastic so that is one of the things that we are doing that then we are trying to see you know this to take over as i told yeah i mean we are doing a uh, uh, the model is for a couple of uh, use cases one is for a descriptive analytics for uh, one of the oil exploration companies with uh, the engineering and the second is for um, the same thing we are going to apply for a high tech retail uh, company uh, for that so now um yeah i'm going to do the same model for a uh, both guys and we are both on to them that you know that we are exploring the thing that Uh, yeah, the model is for that purpose. And, uh, yeah, at the moment, uh, strict ones in the uh, same way. Anybody having experience? Yes. Uh, the obvious the accuracy is quite uh, low. To be honest, uh, it is uh, at the moment stuck at uh, something seventy uh, five. Yeah. Um, so we not sure and uh, this, this kind this see first thing uh, we are focusing on the structure of the thing and uh, then uh, yeah obviously that is how we are going to do it in the attack by contra and the and yeah obviously it is not just a uh, here it's not exhaustive and we are also So my idea on the two days, no, yeah, better methods that you can use. I only do up the simple things. Yeah. Okay, these are the things you know, like um, during our journey, these are the various things. Uh, I mean, apart from these four, we have a lot of help, a lot of other things, but we got a lot of stuff and all those references. But these are the definite things that I could remember. Um, that you know what we have. Uh, All these works coming from where it is coming from. Um, in fact, uh, the logistic regression is something like a VM to apply uh, on top of a VM. Uh, yeah, that is uh, as I said. I know that. Uh, yeah, that that is also another new uh, stuff. But uh, what we are trying to do is definitely we don't want. Trying to do more of a standard, standard parameter stack. So that we want to do an average, and then on top of it, we are going to do an average for both of them. Okay. So given that these are the functions of the standard dynamic factor, we in less work that seems to be quite convincing. So we are doing that. Then is that. I'm also talking about antibiotics. We spoke about a lot of things. I'm working on that again. I was talking about. I was planning to read and research and understand more about the study that I did. I was talking about the study that I did. Right. So, uh, we have a quick uh, uh, stuff. Whatever I uh, said before, uh, like uh, yeah. So we are uh, uh, doing a consortium with uh, more of a uh, Both with uh, with a new one with uh, a consultancy, with a consultancy as well, and we are open and we want a uh, specialist uh, with a consultancy to come and join us and then we can do a consultancy. That takes a lot of effort, and the different people who fit the local project, we can talk to them for the development, the engineering, the science, the analytics folks. They can talk to them about the project, they can come and consult with us for the project. 
we reach out to the data in the set, and also to the even if you want to do that. With that, I'm done. Thanks for everyone's coming. If you have a question, some questions. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't really say from the experience because it's influenced to a certain extent by prestige. Because we've been uh, contracted by the company to do uh, that. And we have even done some work in the uh, uh, But yeah, I mean, because we've been uh, contracted in a couple of cases, we have done work in that, you know, we just choose the task and the team for our staff to work on. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not in a position to say, yes, I have used in, in uh, 10 different places, three or five different uh, uh, libraries. Oh, that is that. I'm, 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 just want to, I'm not in a position to say that. We've been contacted to do that way, so it's, it's in, heavily influenced by the first place. Which is your point? Because that is where the, I have that known people, and that is where I have consultants, and that is where I do sitting. And yeah, I mean, Keras is one, uh, Tars and Keras, both. Uh, but that's what we are doing. Like so we, um, if you have a Keras product, we can have a to hear about that. Why it is? And uh, yeah, see, because um, I mean, part of uh, my um, consortium, so what we do is we educate people. I mean, when people come and say, oh, okay, do you have a people following this one? So we understand the way that exactly they can be also We have done some uh, low level stuff like a uh, uh, for fiction. Other than that, sad uh, for uh, yeah, because for uh, uh, analytics work uh, for other than that, uh, for the and the and the 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 Thanks for everyone. If anybody has suggestions for other folks for future sessions, please send it to the um, And then we will be able to have a conversation. Uh, and any other suggestions? And we got some polls as well and long. Well, thanks. It's good. Yeah. I need to rush off because I have another meeting at nine in London tomorrow. Usually, I don't go to London more than.
once every two weeks. Yeah, that's the day.